Almost by nature, forge maps can often struggle to cross the line between being noticeably low detail and having convincing themes. Halo 5's Forge has allowed Forge maps to be more versatile in their themes than ever before, but without proper understanding of the tricks and rules of detailing, it can be very hard to cross the boundary mentioned prior. In this episode of Understanding Forge, we're going to discuss the techniques you can use to create immersive themes and high detail on your map, all while being budget and user effective. Let's get this started. Before we dive into the rules and methods of detailing, let's go ahead and establish two of the overarching issues nearly all forgers encounter while forging. In general, we create spaces using blockout methodology. This is to say, the rough shape of the map is what comes first, and the detail comes later. While blocking out a map's design is very critical, often we can become attached to the map's appearance in this low detail form particularly the total map shape and geometry. Put simply, it can be hard for us to break away from the blockout's total look after we've been working on it for so long. In addition to this, we often create said blockout before we decide on a singular theme. Our blockout may end up having geometry that does not naturally complement the desired theme. So our initial issue has been established. Now let's take this scenario and use a few techniques to work our way out of this issue. The first technique we'll discuss is called referencing. This is the process of translating either real world or conceptual designs into our forge maps rather than attempting to create these designs on the fly. When we are aiming for realism or overall accuracy, referencing can be a critical tool in creating the geometry needed to do so since we're producing things that literally imitate real life or some semblance to it. Referencing can be used on a variety of things, making note of the shapes and styles of real life buildings and locations, for example, can help you create realistic ones in Forge. Using referencing, I was able to create a believable catapult on this map quickly and effectively. While this technique is very useful, you should still be careful not to overuse it, as you may end up feeling bound to your reference and thus your map will lack original design. I would suggest starting with this method as a groundwork and then work your way up from there. Now let's focus on our detailing. We can often forget that detail doesn't necessarily have to equal huge item counts and wild displays of thematic elements. In fact, some of the most crucial details that sell a theme are the little things like a light switch or patches of grass in a field. But when we consider our budget, it's very easy to see how small details can very quickly eat up our resources. Luckily for us, we can use a technique called layering to add many small or crucial elements to a map with little dents in our budget. Layering is defined here as the use of overlapping pieces to create unique looks by only showing key portions of the overlapping pieces. This might seem like a common sense application, but many players fall into a pattern of forgetting this step or they may not immediately see the uses for certain objects outside of their intended purposes. When applying layering, try to consider the applications of objects outside of their described names. Finally, we'll discuss a rule of thumb for creating better immersion with walls and floors. But first, I want you to close your eyes briefly. Now picture a room, any room or even any hallway in your head. Now think about the line where the floor and the wall meet. Got it? Now look back at the screen. See anything wrong? You may have noticed that the floor and the wall meet at a perfect joint here, but in your head, and in both reality, floors and walls are always separated with some form of trim. I would say the greater majority of forgers completely forget this facet of realism when making maps, and its inclusion, if applicable, can go a long way to better selling your theme. Another common floor versus wall pitfall is that people often leave their walls and floors as the same color. In general, this does not happen in reality, but when we start to consider gameplay, having the floors and walls of the same color can be disorienting to players and just hard on the eyes. Creating even minor variants between the two can go a long way to accelerating your theme and enhancing gameplay. 
I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't. Don't be afraid to ask questions below, and while you're down there, be sure to follow me on Twitter too. Until next time, I'll catch you later, Home Slice. I, I, I,